Hoofa. Well, that was a brutal experience. The Mavericks get drilled at home in what I believe was their sixth home game of the year, fewest in the NBA thus far. They get drilled 133 to 108 at home against the Houston Rockets, a Houston Rockets team without Victor Oladipo, without Christian Wood. This was a this was an ugly loss, but you know what? It's a team that very clearly, very clearly was missing several key players still and was playing seven games in 11 days. This team was out of gas is what I'm saying. Shorthanded and out of gas. And the Mavericks, they made a little bit of a run to cut it down to 11 going into the half. They came out then with some good fire in the third quarter, cut it down to three, 74, 71, and even had a, a West Wundu corner three off a great dime from Luka to try and tie the game up, but they miss. Houston goes the other way and rattles off a couple baskets. And man, this was uh, this was just Houston's night as a message pops up on the screen. Let me make a quick adjustment here. So I'm trying something slightly different on the fly. Uh, I am in the Zoom call for the press cover right now for the Mavericks game. I will take you live to that well you'll see it the next day regardless but i will flash to that when that comes up uh but what you need to know about this game houston's three-point shooting was ridiculous 47 percent, 16 of 37 dallas meanwhile 5 of 25 the fatigue showed a lot of weak legs again that san antonio game last night great win but you saw it take the energy out of their legs very fast-paced game Houston 55% for the game, uh, led basically by Eric Gordon and by Boogie Cousins. Best game I've seen from Boogie by far this year. He turned it back to his old Sacramento days, maybe early, early Pelican days. In 30 minutes, he had 28, 17, and 5 on 9 of 15 shooting, 4 of 8 from 3, and 6 of 7 at the line. Cousins was shooting like 26% from three on the year he gives you four of eight i mean the the guy was in a rough spot and he busted out in a big big way houston in general was firing on all cylinders tonight uh they get john wall back he's not even a factor in this game i think that's the part that's the craziest to me 21 minutes for him seven points one rebound eight assists three of nine shooting oh of four from three john wall's not a factor so it's another guy that you're like okay of what they have They don't have much, and he's not even coming through and delivering big for them. And it didn't matter because Eric Gordon, 30 minutes, had 33 points, 6 of 9 from 3. I think he made his first 6, 7 of 9 at the line, 10 of 17 from the field, just absolutely carving Dallas up in this game. Houston off the bench, they get 18 out of Nawaba. I mean, 6 of 7 from the field, 4 of 5. That was at the line. He was two of two from three. I mean, you're getting plays everywhere from this Rockets team. Uh, Kenyon Martin Jr. with several blocks, three blocks, swatted Boban at the rim, swatted Luka driving to the basket, and that was a big swing because at the time, Dallas was making a charge behind Luka, and you're like, okay, they have a chance. They'll cut it to eight here. They're on a bit of a run, and ooh, big swat, and there's a three the other way. Like, that just kind of epitomized this game. Houston's three-point shooting was unconscious for the game. A lot of second-chance points early uh, and a lot of wide, open three-point looks, and guys just not missing. You know, for the people who want to see more Boban minutes, I understand Boban in this game. Uh, Let me see. What did he end up with? He ended up as a plus nine, 19 minutes, 15 points, 12 boards. Hey, that's great. But the dude's lateral movement is non-existent, and Houston absolutely had everything they wanted at the rim. Everything they wanted. And that's why you can't play Bulba on big minutes. There's a reason at this stage of his career he's still never been a big minutes guy. I mean, I don't know why this has to be a conversation still. But Houston, uh, Houston gets you, man. Jones for them off the bench, 16 as well. This uh, this looks like a Dallas team. It's a Houston team came in fired up and playing much better than I expected them to. 
a Dallas team that was very clearly on fumes coming in, didn't look like they had the energy and were ready to play out of the gate, and then just got completely mopped up in the second half of the third quarter. When they cut it to three, Houston went on a ridiculous run, like 30 to 13. Not a re- I mean, it's, yeah, basically two to one ratio. 30 to 13 to close the third quarter after Dallas had drawn within three. The lead pushes to 21 going into the fourth quarter. And that, I mean, that was the game. That was it. At that point, it didn't matter. Um, you know, Luca gives you 26, 5, and 8 on 9 of 18 shooting. Only 1 of 6 from 3, 7 of 12 at the line. Um, you know, he played 29 minutes. Didn't play him a lot in the second half because it got away, especially that fourth quarter. I don't think he touched the floor at all. It, it didn't. It didn't matter. This team was clearly on fumes. And their, their role players that are usually so good for them weren't good tonight. Well, Willie Cauley-Stein in the start laid an absolute egg, and you could see it from the very start of this game. He was not going to be a great factor. 18 minutes, 6 and 3, 3 of 4, and a block, but Cousins was just eating him alive to start the game. Uh, Josh Green, 20 minutes, 6 points, 2 boards. He gets most of his damage in garbage time here. Nothing significant. Hardaway, 4 of 13 from, for the game. Doesn't get his first bucket until the third quarter. Just nothing. Trey Burke gives you 13 points in 24 minutes, but it's not enough. Uh, Brunson, you know, we talked about how stellar he's been in the starting lineup this season. Nine points, three boards, three assists. Not a lot. And that just kind of sums up this game for Dallas. They're shorthanded. They're missing a lot of critical players. And the guys they did have didn't show up. That's that's it. Their role players that they were having to lean on for this last stretch of the past couple weeks. Not enough left okay, in everyone, the tank. Luca's walking. If you have questions, we'll so you can raise your hand. We'll do English first. It looks first. like we're about to come back to Luca now at the at the table here for the press conference. So as soon as that comes in, I'll flash over to that. But we're going to see. I'm improvising all of this completely on the fly as I try to balance a post-game show of some sort with the Mavericks post-game press conference. Rick Carlisle already came and went. Uh, not a whole lot of in-depth there. Pretty much just a, hey, no excuses. Uh, we're going through a brutal stretch, but we got to play better than that was pretty much his takeaway. But yeah, for Dallas... Uh, they, they just have to find something. They need something. And uh, this next week's not going to be a whole lot easier. You got two opponents. You got a back-to-back with Utah, who is red hot right now. That's going to be brutal. Here's Luka now. And then uh, back-to-back with Phoenix. So let me flash over to Luka now. All right, Tim Cato. Hey, Luca. Uh, I think you've made more mid-range jumpers this season already than you did all of last year. Um, what what kind of made that a focus for you this season? Uh, yeah, I think uh, I work on it during the summer. You know, it's something I have to add in my game. Uh, it's still a lot to improve, but I'm feeling way more comfortable with it. Eddie? Look, uh, you guys uh, got it real close there in the third quarter, and then it looked like there just maybe wasn't enough energy to get over the hump. What happened uh, the rest of the way on that that stretch? And I have a follow up if I could. Oh uh, yeah, I think we just uh, relaxed. You know, we came back, and then we just uh, relaxed in a certain way. So I think that that's what happened there. Also, uh, uh, your old buddy, uh, J.J. Barea, signed with the uh, Spanish team uh, in Madrid. Just wondering if you had talked to him and what you thought about that. Yeah, I I talked to him uh, the first time. I mean, he told me before, so I knew. Uh, But, you know, it's great for him. You know, he loves basketball. I think Spanish leagues is one of the the best leagues uh, in Europe. And it's going to be a great opportunity for him. You know, he just loves basketball and he's going to love playing there. Okay, and then one in Spanish and then you'll be done. Rafael? Saludos, Luca. ¿Me escuchas? Sí. Sí, y de eso mismo quería hablarte de lo de J.J. Barea. ¿Crees que tiene algo que aportar a la Liga Europea? ¿Cómo? 
¿Crees que tenga algo que aportar a la Liga Europea? ¿Algo que sea único en él que tú hayas visto en los años que jugaste con él? Bueno, sí, es un jugador increíble. Eh, creo que va a ayudar a muchísima gente ahí con su experiencia, pero también creo que eh, lo va a hacer muy bien y va a jugar muy bien. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Eddie. Yeah, Trey, uh, did it just seem kind of like um, Boogie had one of those uh, flashbacks to his Sacramento days tonight? Yeah, yeah, he came out um, definitely as a force. Um, We couldn't keep him off the off the glass. I think that was a big reason why it got got out of hand in the first half. Um, no excuses though. We 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 should have did a better job of keeping him off the boards. Um, coming into this game, we knew he was going to be a big factor for them. With Ola Depot out, uh, we knew he was going to be more aggressive. So uh, just attention to detail tonight. You got to be better at attention to detail going forward, especially in a game like Monday with Jokic. Ready? Anything else? <clears throat> No, that's good. Thank you. All righty, Coop. Oh, good, yeah. No, 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 sorry. Oh, okay. Just for Eddie, he had a, he's had a couple call-ups today. So. Coop, Ray, you're, you're not getting out of there that fast. Hey, how concerned, and this is kind of a carryover, I guess, from last year, how concerned are you guys about the way you're playing at home? And I, I realize there aren't fans in the stands and whatnot, but, you know, this is where you're going to be playing the majority of your games, and the, the three games that you've lost have, have really not been very pretty. Yeah, we're conscious of it for sure. Definitely conscious of it. We're right now, it's just simple, simple. We're better. We're a better road team right now. Um, I don't really have the answers to that. I think collectively we're trying to figure out what it is that can get us going at home. Um, but there is no fans nowhere. So it's really not an excuse. Uh, we have to bring our energy every night. Uh, we tell each other that amongst each other going out on the court. But it's easier said than done. Uh, we got to find a way to, you know, get, get, you know, get our juice back here and uh, and build off of the wins that we just had. We just had two, what, two wins on the road. Uh, tonight would have been three in a row. Would have been good to get it. But uh, you know, you got to have a short term memory. Um, learn from this. And the beauty of it is, we got a day off tomorrow, and we have another home game against a good team on Monday. So I think we can we can start to ch to, to turn that narrative around. All right, Wayne. Trey, could you uh, kind of explain how well Jalen has been playing these last four games after missing five games in the uh, uh, protocol? I know he went through the same thing during the uh, bubble last, last summer. Okay, he's been big for us. He's been big for us. Um, as you, you know, he hit the game winning shot last game to seal the game. In Indiana, he played great. Um, you know, he's a playmaker. That's, that's who he is. He's a winner. You know, obviously he's won at every level. Um, I think we complement each other when we're out there together. Um, and we, you know, he's, we're going to need for him to continue to be big for us even when everyone else comes back. I think we all kind of have our own specific role and our own niche on what we do. And, uh, you know, we still don't have it all figured out. You know, not just Jalen, but collectively as a union on how each – each and everyone's, you know, specific niche, how we can bring that to the table every night for the better of the team. And I think that's going to be the challenge that, you know, that we're going to have to continue to fight for. All right. Thanks, Trey. Appreciate Thank you. you taking the time. Enjoy your day off tomorrow. Thank you. So uh, that was Trey Burke talking about the loss there. The Mavericks are in a situation where they've got to figure some things out. They've played in a ridiculously brutal stretch. This was their seventh game in 11 days, their first game at home uh, after a road trip. It was only their sixth, I believe, maybe only fifth home game of the season, which is the fewest in the league, and it's absurd. Uh, of their first 15 games, 10 were against playoff teams from last year. So they, they've been in a hard spot, no doubt. This team has struggled, and they've had to face a lot of adversity. They've been hit about as hard as anybody as far as the health and safety protocols are concerned. And now it becomes a matter of how they can respond, because next week's going to be really tough as well. 
They're going to have a back-to-back with the Red Hot Jazz, who is about as good right now as anybody in the league. They are in the, I think they're the three seed currently in the West, but they've won like seven or eight straight. And really it's just the two LA teams and the Jazz that have separated themselves in the West. Everybody else is jumbled up between four and ten. So Dallas hasn't lost much ground despite the adversity they've had to deal with. And that's very comforting. That's a very good uh, development, you would say, for Dallas. All things considered. If you want to find a silver lining, that's where you got to look. But after that, they're going to have to deal. Bobon's going to be next here. So uh, in this case... They got the Suns then after the Jazz and another back-to-back. And the Suns are a very good team as well. They're struggling a little bit right now, but they've definitely been a dangerous team that has bit Dallas in the ass all throughout the last probably three or four years. So, yeah, this next week's going to be a really rough stretch for Dallas as well. Hopefully they can weather the storm. Josh Richardson was in attendance tonight, not playing. Sounds like he's very close to returning Doreen Finney-Smith is going to be a slower progression getting back. It sounds like him and Richardson both got sicker from their COVID-positive results and, like, sicker than other Mavericks who were affected by it, including, I guess, Maxi. And Richardson's right at the cusp of returning, but not quite there yet. Dallas desperately needs him at this point. They're missing several key players, and they're clearly on fumes. You know, Jalen Brunson, he he was been great all year whenever he's had to step into the starting lineup. He was not great tonight. He was, you know, very mediocre, like not not saying mediocre and like, oh, he was poor. Like he was just OK. He wasn't a difference maker tonight. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr. was ice cold for most of the game. Didn't really amount to a whole lot in this game when it mattered. And they just didn't get enough out of their essential role players for what they needed. And it played a big role in their struggles, I think. So we'll see what this team is able to do. I'm very hopeful that they can turn a corner here because this is a, you know, four through 10 might be jumbled in the West, But you don't want to play around too much. You don't want to lose your next four games on top of this. You don't want to hit like a five-game skid. You want to build on the good that you've done. Yeah, you'll have KP back after this next game. Him not playing tonight was more, I think, about rest and management than anything. You're never going to play KP five games in seven days, especially this early in a return. And anyone who's mad at KP for not playing, it's not KP's decision. It's the team trying to safeguard him. Does it make sense in game 15 of the year to be like, yep, I know you've played five games in seven days, but get your ass out there and let's run it back one more time. It's game 15 and we got to win. No, you're so short-sighted if you think that. You have to look at the bigger picture. You have to look late in the season, in the postseason. That's when you have to manage and that's when you have to, like that's when you have to manage toward what you're building. To do it right now, to go all out right now, is detrimental to your team and to your season. So if you have a healthy KP and a healthy Luka, you can go far. But you got to have those two things. I don't know whether or not they'll have it, but I know it doesn't make them any better or more likely to get there by going all out right now. So 